Garth Marenghi's Dark Place is one of the finest comedies in the history of television. And while that is a bold statement to make, if you were to compare comedies on your normal bell curve, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place would be in the top end in what I call the masterpiece zone. He's right, Sant. One of the main reasons I went into medicine was for the laughs. That and the pussy. It is a show that is layered with ingenious wit throughout its just six short episodes. And it starts with the show's name, which is actually the name of a fictional show in the 80s that this actual show is really all about. When I wrote, directed and starred in Garth Marenghi's Dark Place back in the 1980s, I gave every episode a theme. Even when we were running out of time or I was really tired. It is a show within a show that follows the lives of characters who work in a hospital called Dark Place and which is the setting of several strange supernatural occurrences. I can't hold these plates off much longer, Liz! Why don't you help? Instead of just standing there dreaming about lipstick. But it doesn't just stop there, as this fictional show was cancelled in the fictional universe it portrays, and the actors who played those characters are now being interviewed to talk about the making of their cancelled show. It's so hard to watch this episode, knowing that she's now missing, presumed dead, with the presumption heavily on dead. I don't think they'll find anything. But then again, she was like a candle in the wind unreliable. The genius of this setup is that it's parodying both horrors and drama shows of the 80s, but also the behind the scenes featurettes that are filmed for those kinds of shows. Each works well enough on its own, but together they make for an incredibly hilarious type of storytelling, and it just goes to show how clever the writing of the entire show is. Oh my god! The actor who played that part was not happy. However, I had taken him aside that morning and explained to him what was going to happen. I was going to keep the crew down to about 10, 12 people. It's this combination that makes me love how well the writers have fused the A and B stories together to support one another. You could still watch the original fake show's storyline without any interviews and find it just as funny, but the additional commentary and interviews surrounding it adds another great layer to it all. We found out that the mist was poisonous when two techies died, yes. Now, I don't like to see anyone die. But if someone has to die, it might as well be a techie. And speaking about layers, I should also add that Garth Marenghi's Dark Place is filled with so many different types of filmmaking gags that truly give a testament to the sheer level of ingenious involved with the production of the show and its writing. There is bad acting. I hope he heeds my words about being with this in an orthodox manner. He will. He's the best damn doctor on the wing, or any other wing for that matter. He's a wild card. But I'm glad he's in our deck. Let's hope he plays a fair hand. He'll come up, Trumps. If it's not a joker in the pack. And sometimes there is. Poor production quality. The word is it'll be ready in five minutes. <laughs> I'll believe that when I say it. Tell me about it. Have you met the temp? Low budget prop effects. <laughs> what is it? Cordless iron. Friggin' smarts as well. Of course. Terrible sound mixing and recording. And with Larry back, it feels like the gates could reopen any second. And that's the last thing I need. You're overworked as it is. Tell me about it. It'll be a total hassle. Look, I'll help you. I'm free most Tuesdays and my doctor's contract hasn't officially started yet. This ain't orthodox, Liz. Just when were you orthodox, Rick? That's true. Please. Absurd plot choices. My best friend's woman's gonna die. She's turning into broccoli. Oh, Jesus Christi. It's taking her over. It's very infectious, Padre. And I fear the only way to stop this spreading will be to boil her. You could steam her. And hard editing cuts. Wait, I have more things to say. Go on, sorry for the interruption. Don't mention it. She's saying there's something supernatural going on. All of which are filmmaking techniques that are used as a gag, but also cleverly parody elements that made up those low budget shows of the 80s. It's not uncommon to see a floating microphone here or there. And it's these little moments where the writers have intentionally added in little mistakes that add another layer of comedy to the show. 
Scotch mist. Scotch mist, Dag. But what Scotch mist? One moment while I cross-fertilise the data. But none of this means that what they've inserted intentionally isn't done without any thought. Because on the contrary, it's clear that the filmmakers and writers know so well exactly what they are parodying and of the techniques and elements of filmmaking that they can then, in turn, know exactly how to get a joke from them. This kind of writing and knowledge of filmmaking is, in my opinion, one of the most enjoyable ways you can make a show or film. Because it's where you can see the people behind the scenes clearly know their craft and are cleverly using every scene as a way to have fun with the characters. What the? Life of this? Damn, things come alive in my head! Suck on that! It's this combination of writing and filmmaking knowledge that makes Garth Marenghi's Dark Place feel like a hilarious playground where you can find so many different easter eggs and intentional goofs all over the place. This is one of those shows that makes rewatches just as good or even better because you notice more and more about the mise-en-scene that just doesn't make any sense and it makes the whole scene genuinely funny. Call it, Sanchez, or you'll get a knuckle supper. Look, Douglas, you're an excellent doctor, but you're also a life wire maverick, who, when he's not bucking the system, is biting the hand that feeds, which, in your case, it's this hand. Let's make love right here on the moor. <laughs> Hold on. What's that? Oh, that's just missed off fog. You'll forget all about it once you're into it. But while I do like the abstract crazy concepts for each episode, especially from a low-budget perspective, the show is best when it works on being subtle. You'll know what to do. You're the most sensitive man I know. And I know God. Saved my life once. I saved his life twice while I was why not? I'm gonna have to face them. I'm coming with you, Dag. No, you're not, Sanch. Fair enough. Every line of dialogue has a hidden opportunity for a joke, and sometimes you might not get the joke until much later on, or on a rewatch. The humour is incredibly witty and dry in satire, and it reminds me of other British comedies like The Office or The IT Crowd, except I would argue that Garth Marenghi's is even better. I've stood in Dean's front room and watched him make a lot of love. Let's just say that. So much for possibility. French for possibilities. I'm going for a shower. I'll be with you in two secs. You can scrub my legs. (gasps) Men. You better believe it. It's clear that this show was made for actors like Richard Ayoade, Matthew Holness, and Matt Berry, because each knows how to deliver this kind of humour by playing everything off so seriously. Broccoli from space. I wondered why it tasted odd. This is serious, Thornton. Come on, Dag, that was funny. You're right, that was funny. She's a good girl, Dag. You're too hard on her. I know. I just don't find her physically attractive. I'll get him up. I personally love these actors and I can tell that they would have enjoyed playing these characters simply by how much energy and precise execution they brought to their roles. They clearly understand how to do subtle humour and even when not to do so with an over-the-top reaction. Welcome to Dark Place, Liz. My hand! Knock it off, you two! This is a hospital! That'll stop him. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place is a work of pure art, and art like this deserves more attention. And the best part about that aspect is that the show is quite literally free to watch just on YouTube, so you don't have to work too hard to try and find it, even if it was a show that was cancelled. But maybe it being cancelled is fitting because part of the whole premise is about why it was cancelled. Therefore, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place actually being cancelled in real life is just the cherry on top for a show that oozes meta humour to a degree that I've rarely seen but love. So even though we only got six episodes, maybe that was exactly just the right amount. And like anything truly valuable or worth its weight in gold, we should treasure it like nothing else we've seen before. Because in the case of Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, that's very much the case. Liz, fancy egg and soup? I'm free this evening. No, I think I'll wash my hair. 
Okay. Plus, I've now got a headache. Sure, whatever. I'll put some sounds on. There's a bad atmosphere in here. Why won't she be mine? I wish I was more attractive like Douglas. Still, one can only dream. I'm a one-track lover Down a two-way lane Driving fast down the highway Must have been insane Cause the temperature's too high Traveling way too fast And I knew our loving Was too hot to last She's smooth, like ice, cold to the touch, and it isn't very nice when you left. Alone, your lady treats you bad, leaves you hanging on the phone, take off. Shove your loving on the wheel, put the pedal to the floor, cause you're heading for the hills, gotta get away. Can't take it no more, man, you don't need this, leave her at the door. The door, the door, the door. Sanch, open the door. Open the door, Sanch, Sanch. Sorry, Thornton, bad dream. I know writers who use subtext and they're all cowards.